What's going on? It's the Death Metal Chronicle Show. I'm Wolf. I'm Corey. And we've been doing a radio show lately, but today we actually did a video, since we're feeling up to it, and did a video. Although it was only 46 seconds long. Yeah, but it was a fast 46 seconds. That's what she said. Oof. Um, so... You're using Linux Mint 16, is that correct? Yes. And what kind of, what brand of a uh, of SSD hard drive are you running on there? Ah, uh, it was a Kingston HyperX, kind of a low budget one actually. How much did it cost? Ninety bucks. How many g- GBs? Hundred gig. Hundred gigs? Hundred gig. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, I'm running on my actual what we're editing the the show with. I'm using a Kingston sixty four gig. I need sixty four. It cost me thirty bucks. I'm like, pff, I'm buying this, getting it, and then I'm booting. Uh, Ubuntu off of it, which I think it takes me maybe around 60 seconds or s- maybe less to boot up. Uh, it's a big tower computer and all. There's all kinds of crap loaded onto it. <laughs> all kinds of devices and cords and things, so it probably takes a little bit longer for it to do uh, stuff. Looks like it came out of an episode of Robot Chicken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how have you been liking Linux Mint so far? Uh, it's actually been pretty good. I uh, had a few issues. The only issue I had is the, uh, I formatted a external hard drive in Mint, and I haven't been able to get my uh, Windows 8 computer to see that. However, Mint... Oh, it has to be formatted for the right thing, though, right? Yeah. There's different formats you have to use for each operating system? E- yeah. However, the second external hard drive that I had, have, that I use with my Windows 8.1 machine... Linux Mint picks that up flawlessly. Badass. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. And so, like, is it a problem within the boot order that Windows won't pick it up, or is it, it just doesn't see it at all? It just doesn't see it at all. So it's not that it, it sees it and it's not booting it, it's that it just doesn't see that it's there. Mm-hmm. I probably have to go into disk part, remove the partitions, and completely format the drive in order to get it to be uh, recognized. But God forbid you lose your product key. Well, no, it would be the external hard drive that I'm doing that to. Oh, this is not what you're actually booting Windows off of? No. God. Besides, I, I'm old-fashioned. I got a copy of Magic Jelly Bean and got my Windows 8 product key. What's Magic Jelly Bean? Um, it'll help you find the uh, the actual product key. Oh, is Windows it inside 8? the... Because you no longer get the sticker. What? On your system unit. Yes, not only, does it, not only do computers no longer come with recovery disks, but they use a developer copy of Windows, and it's tied to the motherboard. So, if your motherboard These crashes... These fuckers are crazy. So, you know, what happens if it crashes? You might be able to reinstall it with the product key. And when it gives you the error message, say, Hey, Windows, yada 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 happened. You know, it's the same machine. And the guy over the phone will probably give you another code to key in, and you're up and running. Well, but they keep rolling Windows here. You'll never keep for your deals. Exactly. Well, then 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, and they will answer. Yep. I've had pretty good luck with those guys, actually. <laughs> I work here every single day. What are you talking about? Have you seen that episode of Illwill Press? Yes, I have. Yes. What do you mean, you're there 24-7? <laughs> well, I live here every single day. Uh. <laughs> so when do you sleep? <laughs> well, I take little naps here and there. You let them on hold? <laughs> is that why it's on hold for 45 minutes? <laughs> it was called power sleeping. <laughs> it was nappy time? <laughs> nappy time. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah, I was really confused about how if you have... If you already own the Windows, so if you own it, like, as it, like you know, now we understand that, you know, intellectual property is supposed to be something that you... It's, it's, even though it's virtual, you can still own it because you have property rights. So, if you had property rights over something that you've purchased through Windows, why would you need to have the key to own it? And then if you lose the key, then you don't own it anymore. It depends upon the license that you have with them. There are different, like, you know, Windows 8, there's different versions of it. You know, there, there's a good old full version, which, you know, you get your product key, your computer, you know, you decide, you know what, I'm going to rip out my motherboard. I'm going to rebuild my entire machine from new parts and go ahead and use that same version again. Same product key. Yeah. All right. That's the full version. 
Now, when you buy a machine, all right, like my desktop, I just you know went out and picked it up for a couple hundred bucks. It came with Windows 8 on it. Uh, it uses a was it a, a developer's version of Windows where it can only be used on that one machine. What? If that machine completely dies, your license doesn't continue to carry on. And you can also buy you, if you pop onto eBay. Yeah. And you look up Windows 8. You'll see, hey, look, I can get Windows 8 for different prices. You know, part of the reason for that is you'll notice some of them say full version and others don't. The ones that are not the full version, they'll tie themselves to that motherboard. Newly sealed professional upgrade, 32 or 64 bit, pro with key and COA, $82. COA is certificate of authenticity. All right, now look it up and key in the word full version with it. Oh, yes, there we go. Oh, look at the price jump. $100. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't and understand how this is, like, only now, 20% you'll notice of the some population. Of these, you'll notice some of these here. You know, it says full ver well, you know, it's the full version, but it's not, it doesn't actually say it on the box. You, let's go ahead and, uh... The spine one that'll definitely say it. If you sort price high to low, you'll probably find it really fast. Yeah, high is first. And just keep going down. Microsoft Project Professional? What the fuck is that? Yes. I'm not seeing it. Because it should say full version on the box. But this is also the problem with UEFI. So now oh, UEFI here. is the trusted platform. This, this software must be pre-installed on the hard drive of the fully assembled computer system using the OEM pre-installation tools. For information about yada yada yada, see Microsoft. So here they're selling you this, which is a piece of paper which is actually no good. <laughs> uh, but you can get developers... Uh, version for, you know, the, the do-it-yourself computer builder, you know, where I'm going to build this machine and I'm going to turn around and sell it. Yeah. All right. You can get a cheaper version of Windows 8. And each product key is good once. I think I spelled the word developer wrong. I think it starts with a Q. What? what I'm being with? sarcastic. It has a series of tubes? Can you dump a dump truck on it? Tildy. And in all... <laughs> you remember you remember in DOS, there was that one... You hit, hold on, what was it? You hit Alt and then a couple numbers and bring up special characters. Remember, there was Alt 225. was a special character that looked like a space. What? Yes. Alt 225? Images. <laughs> oh oh dude, god! I I don't know what that was, but I I what are we on four chan? We just got trolled. Oh, uh, that is horrible. I'm I'm never doing. A, I don't know what all two two five means in some sort of alt, alternate universe, but it's horrible. Oh. It's horrible. Can I take back the last forty five seconds? Oh my god! That was like a that was some sort of disease. That was like literally something eating the flesh of that person. Oh, that's horrible. I don't ever want to see that. Let's, let's try Amazon and let's see if we can find what I'm talking about. Because eBay is kind of limited to what people have. Sometimes Amazon will What are we looking for again? Windows 8. And uh, full version. Hundred and three dollars. Wow. Now let's try looking up Windows 8. Um, well, there's, there, there, was it? there's System Builder. System Builder? Yeah. 95 bucks. A few bucks cheaper. That's I'm eight, so that's conf that one. confused by this. Yeah. I, and, uh, okay, I'd actually like to find out. So let's look it up. Other than just guessing. 
Uh, Linux users. Uh, Wait, you're looking at Linux users for win Windows? How many? No, no, no. What I'm, I'm going for is I'm, I'm wondering how many people actually use Linux. And so as of 0603, or the 6th of March, there are 121, oh, no, 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 there's 70 million Linux users. World adoption is 7 million, 202. Wow, and it's, it's, it's like, it actually starts, it's like calculating how many people are using Linux right now. More and more people are joining the dark side every minute. <laughs> they're, re they're rebelling, becoming punks. This is uh, this is from LinuxCounter.net. Um, yeah, how many? I wonder how many Windows users there are. It, it's becoming popular enough to the point where I have little grandmothers coming in, going, "Well, I'm about to buy my first computer, and I was told that Linux is what I should get." Really? Yeah. 110 million. So it's almost there. Sort of equal. I don't... Well, no, there's 110 million Windows 8 users. Okay. So there's probably another... Yeah, there's... Oh, God. Right now, there's 1.25 billion Windows PCs in See, the universe. This is why I keep my Windows machine around. I'm really confused by how... I'm wondering where their numbers are coming from. Like, you can't exactly do polling... Because polling doesn't work for something that large. There's probably like developed countries, like you do like a cost uh, you know, breakdown or I guess whatever for like where you get your numbers from. But man, if there's only if there's 1.25 billion and there's only 700 million Linux users, we need to kill off <laughs> either 85 million Windows users well, or you know how many of those are like myself where I use both. Yeah, and I wonder how that the numbers equate in that as well. Like if you if you're dual booting, if that counts towards Windows or if it counts towards yeah. Linux. You, you you go into my house. What are you going to see? You're going to see a Macintosh. You're going to see Windows machines. You're going to see Linux machines. And I got a laptop running Server 2003. Is that is that free or is that do you product keys with that or what do you? I have an educational copy, so it's oh, so it's not. It's good for training, but it'll limit what you can do with it. So it's on an open GNU or open GPL? No, no. What the shit? Now I'm understanding why even more servers are on Linux. I didn't know that. I thought that the server ones were just, you can do whatever the hell you wanted. No. Well, I mean, that's that's very limiting because obviously you can't just change a script or whatever. I mean, just change one of the files in there to do whatever you want it to do. Well, you can do some of that. You're gonna you can get change it around, but you still gotta buy. <laughs> We're gonna get deauthorized too. You know. You know. Yeah. And this server has now notified you that this is not on the trusted platform. You're now required to boot off and boot into the trusted platform, and then <laughs> fucking computer blows yeah. up. No, no th yeah. things I run into are like if I try to attach more than twenty five machines to it, it'll it'll limit me. Why is that? Because it's an educational copy. So if I try to actually use it as a server, in an, as a server in an enterprise environment, uh, it'd be like, why do you have more than twenty five? Why do you have tw you know, fifty people coming onto this educational copy? No, no, no. You only need twenty five max for whatever educational plan around you're doing. I'm fairly certain that PF Sense doesn't. Uh... Yeah. Needless to say, my server machine usually sits in the bottom of the closet turned off. I, don't I actually know. wanted to. I, I want to start my own PF, PF Sense. Uh, but it's there. It's in the tally. PF Sense. Uh, is it, was it PF Sense or was it OS? I forget which server it is. It's a server distribution. You're, you use PF Sense to, to like shape traffic and stuff like that. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But. <laughs> It's a. I think it's Dark Scent. No, no, no CentOS. That's what I'm talking about. CentOS, and the CentOS project is a Red Hat type um, server. 
and it's pretty freaking sweet. It's a regular distribution, from what I know of. I wonder if it comes in different bits, too. So you can do 64... Oh, you have to have 86... X86, though. Which, uh, my roommate's mom's... Okay, my roommate's mom's computer, she had this, like, old-ass laptop, and I tried to put Ubuntu on it, and um, it was like, this cannot be used with a... If it does not have x86, I was like, motherfucker. So I, I was going to revive it, maybe put, like, Puppy on it, but I was like, no, there's no point. This thing's so old. It was already overheating while I was using it, just oh, in Windows. And it was just, yeah, it didn't really like me, and I was like, no, this is not a good plan. Well, let's take it apart and change the thermal compound. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dude, from the store, somebody actually stole a, a tube of thermal compound. Why did you steal that? It only cost, like, ten bucks, right? Yeah. And a tube will last you forever. Yeah, well, there, there it was. There was a packaging. They opened it up. And... At least, at least they stole the good stuff. <laughs> Man, people have been using Mandriva a lot. Mandriva Enterprise Server. I've never heard of a Mempis. M e p i s. Linux distribution. No distribution is as well documented as Mempis. The easy guides. Blah 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 blah. The guy who made it is Warren Woodford. Decades of technology and product development. Oracle Unbreakable Linux? Oh. O U L? <laughs> remember the combs that said Unbreakable on? No. It, when, I, when, when I was in grade school, when they do like a little lice test, they'd use a different comb on each kid. And they'd just be like, here, keep the comb. And you look at it, and it would have carved into the comb and say, like, Unbreakable. They're like these rubbery combs. I broke them. This is from, like, the 80s or something? Yeah. Wait, when did you graduate from high school, by the way? Uh, like 90... 98. Okay, okay. Well, I, you know, yeah, I did kind of graduate high school a little bit later than you. I'm an old man. Well, you're not that much older. It's just, you know, I I'm mean... A, I'm, I'm archaic. I oh, okay, so you, you can actually the... <laughs> get Debian as a server itself. I didn't know that. I, I'm used to hearing of Debian as a, the, the base of something. But not as like a, an act, exact distro itself. Mm. So you get CentOS. Yeah, CentOS is the for businesses. I guess that's not CentOS for business might be first thing on recommendation, but it isn't. CentOS is another distribution that ba that is based on Red Hat Enterprise, R H E L. It is a hundred percent binary compatible with R H E L, and it is community uh, community supported distribution. But anyone who wants to support Oh, okay, 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 okay. But anyone who supports Red Hat can also support CentOS. That's pretty beast. Because mm -hmm. then you don't have to have the product key for Red Hat. Because we're on a product key thing. I don't really know much about it, but I know that it's not something fun. You're good in good company with CentOS. VMware uses its own virtual appliances, and VMware could use any Linux distribution to create a branded distribution. Really? That's cool. They chose to use CentOS which speaks volumes and its quality and reliability. Does it work for business? Ask VMware. <laughs> a lot of people have been using Slackware and Gen 2. Yeah. I, I just think it's funny that it was talking about, you know, was it a binary? Yeah. I'm like, so if it's not working with binary, what is it working with? Quad? Trinary? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's backwards compatible. So it's 100% binary compatible, but only 75% trinary compatible. <laughs> Do you, do you have a trinary processor? What the hell is trinary? <laughs> trinary, what is this? <laughs> Dude, it's something I've made up. The ternary neutral system, sometimes called trinary, <laughs> is a base 3 numerical system analogous to a bit. A ternary digit is a trinary digit. One digit... Sla uh, yeah, we're going to start just talking to fucking binary people. It, the, the one trit contains log... Two by the third by the third dimension is that by the third by the third power about one million five hundred and eighty four ninety six bits of information. Although ternary most often refers to a system which is three digits zero one and two and are all non negative numbers. I have a friend named John out in Ohio. Yeah, and he will talk to me about this kind of stuff. And he knows that I don't understand it, but he'll troll the shit out of me and be like, hey, have you heard about this? And then 
<laughs> I love it because it'll just be a random tube. Like, hey, have you heard of a trinary pit? Did you know that it has three different bits? And it, it was like, and like blowing my mind. Like, I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like, all I'm hearing is 001, 001, 001, 001, 002, 001, 001, 001, 001, 001, 001, 001. That's all I'm hearing. It's kind of, there's an old joke. There's ten types of people in this world. Those who understand binary and those who don't. <laughs> I, now, my buddy was teaching me how to use a binary clock, and I wonder if they have, yeah, binary clock online. Let's do that. There we go. 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 2, 1. I don't understand. Yeah, my buddy had one, like, it's on his desk or whatever. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, although it's kind of weird to be able to uh, to learn how to use it. It's just learning how to count a different way. You know, a, a good way to... A good way to kind of explain... Imagine if... Oh. You, you just gotta learn how to... What was I saying? You have to learn how to count a different way. Um, it's kind of like imagine if... Uh, we only had one hand. So instead of counting, you know, base 10, we always counted base 5. Explain the difference between base 10 and base 5. I don't know what that is. Well, base 10 would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, ah, 60. Okay. And base 5 would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. Okay. So imagine if, you know, we had 11 fingers, and that's caveman instead of counting to 10, and all, you know, and basing the number system off of that, instead of thinking 10, 20, 30, 40, your first instinct was 11. 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77. See, those of us who are, like, math deficient in, like, life. <laughs> but actually, that's the only way that you can explain it, because I've never heard anybody explain it like that. Everybody always explains it, oh yeah, so when caveman days, and they saw, like, two different frogs or whatever, and they count two frogs, as, as, the, as the thing in front of you, not the hands, because the hands actually make sense. Because your life is in ten fingers. Mm -hmm. huh. I can count the two frogs because I have a right hand and a left hand. Now, right now with computers, we're limited with binary, right? Because we're... Well, the, the type of binary that we're using because we only have a certain amount of bits that you can compute at one time. Nah. Because we'd have to reinvent the wheel. And no You'd have to reinvent the processor to be able to handle mm -hmm. a certain amount of bits in one second. No, not, not a second. What it is is uh, the most basic binary is a light switch. Off and on. Okay. To convert something to trinary or to quad, we have to invent a new position for that light switch. Off, on, and what? Half power? Or do we have on times 1.5 would be the third position. N Agreeing on how to make the transistors work this way to create just the basic calculator that works off a trinary before we develop the programming language and everything else is a bit of a road bump. Number base calculator, binary, trinary, optimal do decimal, hexadecimal. So you actually, you can do it. Like, I'm confused. So I guess. Right. Is so, it, so for binary, so go back to your, to your, to your thing here. So for binary, wait a minute, shouldn't, it should have converted it when you hit seven in there for trinary. There you go. So let's erase that seven. All right, let's go up to binary. All right, now let's put in one zero one zero one zero one one. I hit enter. So the one zero one zero one zero one. That. And we're back. Death Metal Crackles, Wolf. And yet, and Corey. And binary. And trinary. Trinary. So one zero dot one zero dot one one is. Well, that sounds like an IP address, but there's no dots in there. It's just 101011, which is some random bits. And so you have it into your... It'll show you trinary 
where you notice how instead of having just ones and zeros, there's also a number two. Yeah, one, one, two, one. Yeah. So if you want to have some fun, if we go down here to trinary, right? And let's throw a zero in the middle of that instead of one, one, two, one. Let's put a zero in the middle. We hit enter. You notice how your binary state is one, just ones and zeros? Oh. So the two is replaced by two ones or by two zeros? If you add up the binary numbers. So you're adding by. Yeah. yeah. So what it, what it really is, all right, so we got our decimal here, 115. That's a number that you can recognize, 115. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you were to actually add up these numbers and convert them into, you know, base 10, 10 digits, you would see 115. Really? That trinary number, if you were to calculate out, you know, the three digits for each one, it would translate into 115. So it's kind of like, I'm 34 years old. <laughs> You're 1,021 years in, bi in trinary. Yes. <laughs> you know, if you were to calculate that out, counting the on and off positions, that binary, the one, zero, I wonder zero, if binary ones. has an eight time. Say that again? If it has an eight time. So you put in your age. Uh -huh. Is the binary the amount of time that you've been living on the earth? Or the amount of time that you have left to live. <laughs> it's just another way to represent the number. But you know, I mean, the thing about it, though, if your age within the amount of minutes that you are alive could be translated into a representative number, what would you do with the time that you know that you have? Calculate my retirement. Well, there you go. Calculate your return. If it's a really low number, I'm going to party. <laughs> if it's a big number, I'm going to start saving. So base 36 is Y? What does that mean? Uh, so 34 is represented by Y. I think base 36 is uh, it's base 10. All right, so 1 through 10. And then when, when you hit 10, instead of going to 11, you go to A. Instead of 12, you go to B. So there's how many letters in the alphabet? 24? Or, no, 16? I can't remember. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I don't know how many there are in the English language. <laughs> so 36, 10. I think we've added a few, actually. Yeah. We now have the Enye in, uh, in the alphabet. <laughs> Does it come before or after Q? <laughs> we have the Enye, and now we have the uh, the uh, the dollar sign, as in super user. <laughs> because now I actually have to you know whenever I write the word pseudo, like in in a letter or like in like a message or something like that, I always have to not spell the, the you know S U D O as in super user. <laughs> I'm always spelling super user. Like, damn it! There's a fucking P in there, motherfucker. That's how you know you're a Linux user. It's where you type the word sudo and you end up typing S U D O. I don't know what this ghetto music is downstairs, but it's kind of obnoxious. Or maybe it's next door to my uh, room, right? Well. Got some, what are they, 15-inch uh, Serwin Vega speakers at home. Got a couple thousand watts of power. We can shake the nails out of this house. What would you need those kind of speakers for? Oh, buddy of mine used to have a, uh, a rock band of concert speakers. Oh, sweet, okay. Mm -hmm. What kind of band is he in? Uh, no longer. It used to be heavy metal. And you haven't hooked us up? Because you know I do the Cookie Monster voice. He doesn't have the band anymore. We could start another one. Shit. He dropped a transmission on his hand. It hurts it to play. Well, I'll play. Oh, okay. He can sing. He can sing? I don't know. What's his name? Oscar. 
Yeah, if he's down, why not? Do some death metal for the the Death Metal Chronicle show, and uh, yeah, I'll do the Cookie Monster voice and mm. play some guitar and you know that kind of stuff. A Cu- couple of breeze in there, you know, turn out pretty well. Can I play the triangle? Ding. All the times have turned. Do 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 do. I wasn't allowed to play the tambourine because I can't clap to a beat. Are you Korean? <laughs> I'm Irish. <laughs> and German. And Hungarian. <laughs> I'm a mutt. What do you expect out of me? Uh. Been enjoying uh, Ubuntu LTS so far. So, when we originally started the show, I was on Ubuntu 13 something. And. I had this crazy situation that happened where I upgraded to 14, I think is what we're on now. I don't even fucking know anymore. 1404, I think is what we're on now with Ubuntu. It's unstable. Even though it's supposedly it's stable, it's fucking unstable. And I basically updated everything, and then I couldn't use OpenShot. I couldn't use uh, my USB mics. It just said no. And it was the worst thing possible. And then you gave me the idea, and Kyle, uh, other guy from the show, gave me an idea to use uh, Ubuntu LTS, which is 12.4, I think. It's actually turned out pretty well so far. Uh, and my computer doesn't hate me so far. Uh, and I've been able to do everything that I need to do without having to uh, utilize any updates. Um, yeah, I'm on 12, 12 or 4. 1204 LTS you've been to, and uh, did you have to do a new? Do you have to do a, a complete reinstall, or can you just roll it back? No, you can't roll back. That's the problem with with Ubuntu right now, which I don't know why. There's other distributions we actually can roll back, but for whatever reason, Ubuntu won't let you do it. So once you go forward, better be turning into Marty McFly, and uh, coming up with a way to get back to the future because. Uh, <laughs> It's not a good plan. Oh, which reminds me, Windows 8, there's no longer an F8 key to get that, uh, set, a safe boot, or safe mode. What the hell? Yes. They disabled it? Or they just took the key out entirely? Took it out entirely. So this like, whole UE, UEFI thing is dangerous. Literally, it's dangerous. Because they're going to be... Prov- I can't imagine if the RAA or like other... Um, agencies that have no borders are just going to start going after people for, you know, putting a different operating system on whatever computer. I mean, you're literally going to have to buy stuff directly from China or whatever with no operating system, no UEFI, nothing on it to be able to just do whatever you want on a computer. Or go to Newegg.com. No, no, even that. I mean, like, it's actually going to get to the point where you're going to have to buy directly from someone selling a device that doesn't have UEFI on it. UEFI? To... UEFI is the secure boot, which, which is what you're talking about. It's, this, oh. it's the trusted platform by Windows. Yeah. Which is what you're talking about. So what they're trying to do is prevent you from getting into the boot order and then putting up whatever you want in the boot. So whether it's Linux, no. whether it's Mac, whether it's whatever. No, safe mode was a diagnostic method. If, if the machine oh, that's not, that doesn't go to the, the boot order? No. No, that's BIOS. Yeah. Oh, That'd F-10. be like hit, hit, yeah, oh, hit, hitting it, escape to get to like that, the BIOS. Uh, tapping F8, instead of booting to a user profile, would boot you to the safe mode profile, which would get you the GUI so that you can make repairs in the event of a system failure. Start your computer in safe mode. Yes. If your computer has a single operating install, you can do the F8. For advanced boot options, highlight the safe mode option you want and then press enter. What? You know, hitting the uh, F8 would be like, you know, boot to command prompt only, command prompt with networking, safe mode. Oh, yeah. Safe mode with networking. Yeah. And why are they preventing this, though? What's the idea behind it? I haven't figured that out yet. 
what I did figure out. And this is on 8.1? 8. It started on 8. It started on 8, yeah. Okay. I I don't think 8.1 has it either. But uh, we've had issues where you'll try to log in, and there'll be an issue, and it won't activate the profile. And say, all right, well, we have to rebuild that part of the drive. But there's no way to get into a safe mode to do it. And what we discovered was is that you hold up, hold up, holding on the shift key while telling it to restart will bring you into the recovery partition where you can overwrite some of that. Really? Mm -hmm. And this is for, like, what would you be going into safe mode for on Windows? Uh, you can't boot into profile. What, what do you go into that for? I don't know. I don't, I'm not a Windows person. To make repairs. And this is downloading Something. packages or... Like fixing network issues? Yeah. Deleting accounts. Well, oh, you would do that from there? You can do it from there, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, let's say like a, a virus corrupted my profile and then spread throughout the system. So what I would do is I'd hit F8 so I can get to the safe boot. That way I can bring up the, you know, make changes to the computer before all the other services and other programs have started. Or I tried to install a new printer. Yeah. The driver messed up my entire system. You know, whenever I use that, my keyboard and my mouse turn off. How do I make this repair without a keyboard and a mouse? Go into safe mode before that printer driver would turn on. Make your repair. Interesting, yeah. Get out and reboot. Can, can, you, can you boot directly into safe mode? Every single time? Or? Well, I mean, like, you, you know, you can, you can start the boot order, and then you can do F8, and then it'll go into safe mode. Uh-huh. So you don't have to boot the the full OS first, and then go into it. Like it's not like a profile. It's yeah. like you're actually booting directly. It's not BIOS, but I guess it's at the kernel level. Yeah, it, yeah. It brings up a GUI with admin rights. Okay. And is that is it a uh, uh, terminal only or GUI? You actually have a GUI. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty sweet. I'm still confused about this whole highlighting and enter and stuff. It seems like this is the the, the advanced startup, I guess. It, but they've t taken out F8. I don't understand why. This is interesting, though. And I, I, I'm i finding it interesting. I don't know anything yeah. about Windows at that's, all. That's something I haven't I, used it in years. Yeah, that's something I just learned this week. Because I haven't had a Windows, a Windows 8 machine that I needed to put in a safe mode yet. I just, the need hasn't arised. Yeah. Uh, so why did they take it out? I haven't researched that yet. Now that you're on Linux Mint, how do you feel about it so far? Uh, the only thing I have an issue with is the uh, compatibility of uh, Office documents. Across Are you platforms. using... I just LibreOffice. You're using LibreOffice, okay. Yeah. What I are had... your problems with, with that? I've had some things that won't translate one way or another. Like PDFs or... Uh, mostly, uh, just, I've only played around with text documents. I haven't done a whole lot of Excel. Now, you can, I know that you can export DocX, and you can ex, you can export specific files with yeah. LibreOffice. But s some of that playing around was messing around with that external hard drive that I was having trouble with. Yeah. Where, you know, where when I'm playing around with the documents, I was trying to get that Windows 8 machine to see that external hard drive, and it wouldn't do it. So I haven't played around with the documents a whole lot. But I've, just, I've had some things where I, I pull it up and the formatting's all messed up. This is what makes me mad about the whole doc or win, Windows attributed file types where it's not cross-platform with Mac, Windows, and Linux, where it should be. There's no problem in these computers doing this. But because we're using XML and then we're using doc... And there is also the possibility that it could be a user problem. <laughs> that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I can see why they wanted to do it originally because it was like a trusted platform and format for, you know, whatever. But now we have a lot more smaller governments and different people that are utilizing non-Windows. And so they're going to, our entire thing is going to be ODT or, open or, format. Yeah, not, not just non-Windows, but sometimes non-Microsoft. Corel's WordPerfect is still out there. God, I haven't heard about WordPerfect in a long time. <laughs> is, that on, is, that, is that on Windows and on Mac as well? Yeah. Do they have it on Linux? 
I don't know. I don't really don't. I don't know if they have it on Mac either. To be certain. It's a Corel. What's it called again? Yeah, it was Corel Word Perfect. God, I haven't heard about that in years. I know. I come up with some scary stuff, don't I? Yeah, I. I, I this is like when we were kids, I think. All right, all right. N next thing I want to bring up is remember back when it, your internet was rated in baud. The fuck is that? Okay, you remember when you had, like, the 28K modem? Before that. Dude, at my glasses place, they actually had one of those. I, I heard the sound. I was like, what the fuck is that sound? I was like, doo 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 It was like, they were, like, pinging did, the... Did you ever have to pick up your phone receiver and put hang it up onto your modem? Oh, man, that's some back-in-the-day shit. I barely can remember that at all. What, what can... What is is that binary? What is that? Well, dude, what you're using here in Linux is binary. But no, no, no. Is that is that binary in sound? Yeah, it's like audible binary. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's what some of our friends speak. Zero zero one zero zero one zero 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 one. Have you heard about zero zero one zero 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 one? Yeah, I heard about that number. <laughs> so Corel still exists, I guess. Uh, I don't. It doesn't exactly say what you can. They're use it they're on. hanging on. Not very well, but they're hanging on. <laughs> Download the free trial. It doesn't, and it doesn't tell me the extension. Ugh, these fuckers. It's interesting. Yeah, you can use Open oh. Office on on all platforms these days. Remember Netscape Navigator? Does Netscape even exist anymore? I don't know. I think they. I think they went under. Netscape ISP. Now they're an ISP now. Yeah. Netscape Communications, formerly known as Netscape Communications Corp., also known as Netscape, is a U.S. computer services company. Yeah. They, they tried to fight Microsoft, and they lost a lot of money on that one. Really? Yes. Um, they, they oh, were... dude, this is, like a, this is like an original web page. This is like what the web pages looked like years ago. Yes. Where it was all on one side. Yes. What's it called? Excellent. Hey, they solved the icon. <laughs> this thing has, has been revamped in how long? Dude, this is like an original web page. It's still on the internet. Like it was like a series of tubes, like page, and it just has links. Yeah. This is like ridiculous. And I guess that Travolta guy is making events for uh, an Oscar performance. I don't know what the hell that's yeah. about. But uh, Netscape tried to argue, oh well, Microsoft is gaining monopoly because they're including Internet Explorer with all their copies of Windows. And that Microsoft fought back with, well, if you really look at our platform, Internet Explorer is just the browser, but the entire Explorer feature is the file management system. So to take out Internet Explorer would be to take out the backbone of the entire operating system. If you use a Windows machine when you're, you know, the, the file management program, you can reach up and you can hit the back button like you do in the Internet browser. Actually, on... Linux Action Show, they were talking about, I forget the name of it, but you can actually make your own search engine. Yeah. I have no clue how you do this. Uh, that's yeah. it's beyond my learning so, this is capacity, the, but yeah. you actually can make your own web browser. Not web browser, but like your own search engine. Uh, I don't know how that works. <laughs> uh, it, it's a little bit beyond me. I remember Shiva. The hell is Shiva? It was... It was a search engine that didn't make it. Search engine that didn't make it. Yes, Shiva. <laughs> I okay. Um, no, she had eight arms, not two. It's some hot Amazonian chick with a cool sword. Try try um, Shiva search engine. Interesting. Uh, yeah, this this is back in like ninety ninety three, I think ninety four. <laughs> might be two e's or something. I'm not really sure. Or it had an i in it. She s h i v a. Try that. S e o India search engine op or Shiva Infotech. This might be just a company that's there. Yeah, in India. Who knows? I actually would like to learn how to start my own uh, search engine. Yeah. It'd be kind of interesting. 
like, like I said, this this was ninety three, ninety four time frame. Before I had a learner's permit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think. It was it was a bunch of, a couple of guys from a uh, University of Louisville in Kentucky. Really? That were starting up their own search engine. Yeah. It's pretty badass. Uh huh. And it it's, it didn't it didn't make it. They couldn't get the following. And... What is interesting now is you know. You can just find a, a browser that you just want to use. Like Opera. Like some guy that makes it. Mm-hmm. Like a, one dude in his mom's basement who made a browser and you can just use it. Whereas there's no there's no longer a monopolization of search engines. These days you can just get a browser and then whatever sources you want to get it from is where you get it from. Mm-hmm. Although de facto Google has now co-opted the internet, which the, the Google is the internet. And they literally have all of our lives tied up within their servers. So it's yeah, I googled my name. That was <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good experiment for you listeners out there. Google your own name. Google it. See what you find. And if you if you have things on the internet that you don't want people to know about you, maybe your address, your phone number, your face, your different pictures of your family members, your ex lady friend that you used to be with that you're no longer with. Yeah, not a good plan. That would be entertaining. Here I am with my girlfriend. Corey, who's this woman you're standing next to? That's my ex-wife. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, Google it and find out what's out there. Because you might be doing some fancy stuff, or you just might be a person that lives in the woods like the Texas Tex Syndicate guys, and uh, you might not want people to know your face. You know. But, uh... Or worse... You try and get a job, they Google your name. Oh, yeah. And they come up with some shady stuff. You at a party doing lines off some hooker's butt? Or just... <laughs> he likes cocaine and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hire him. <laughs> he sounds like fun. He knows hookers. Um, That's how that George Bush thing happened. Hey, hookers are people, too. <laughs> uh, as yeah. a libertarian, I certainly agree with that everybody has an eight... Uh, morality within themselves. They own their person, so they can do what they want with their bodies. As long as it's consensual. The problem is when you sell somebody else's body. Well, if they're consenting towards it, then that's fine. There's no force or fraud. That's that's just a weird fetish. <laughs> Being a pimp? <laughs> I consent to, you know, bang whoever pays you money. Selling somebody... I don't know. You may not agree with it morally, that's different. Morality no, it just, is different. It's not so much agreeing with it as it just sounds scary. Now, this is also with Google. Google is is positive evil. Yeah. They have so much good stuff that you, you, you certainly like them. Like, I love the fact that they have Google Voice. Google Voice allows me to text over the internet to my friend's cell phones, even when I'm deployed. But they're selling my information to the evil people that want my information. They're just, they're evil. They're just neutral evil. <laughs> it's neither good nor bad, it's just... Is. We are legion. <laughs> For we are many. <laughs> <laughs> but send us into the pigs, Jesus. For we will not... I don't know what the, the quote is. <laughs> I'm still thinking a... about that web browser I used to use, Opera. It was the first one I had that had the tab browsing. Opera, well, even no Opera on on cell phones are fantastic. It's mm. one of the best browsers you can put on a, on a cell phone right now mm. or a tablet because it just uses so much less system resources. Hmm. Any uh, last words for uh, listeners out there? Oh, you got good news. You have to say the name of the company, but what kind of job did you just get? Oh, um, got a job down at a, a hospital where it was a. Uh, Bought out, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna go down there and uh, swap over the all the machines from the old network to the new network. Badass. Yes, and although we could do it with a script, they decided, you know, to you know, hospital. They want it done one machine at a time. Not there's no optimization like enterprise optimization where you use like Puppet Linux and just do it all at one time. No, nope. they want hands on each terminal. Okay, They're doing it one at a time. Because they want zero failure. 
well, if someone's willing to shell out the money, which they are, you know, yeah. that's pretty badass. Teach a third grader to do it. It's pretty awesome. And I guess what with a what advice do you have for those looking for technology gigs these days? I don't know. Ah, uh, get two computers. One that you can tear apart and play with. The other one that you actually use. Hell yeah. Yeah, like when you're talking to recruiters, what advice do you have for guys? I have no advice for recruiters. No, for guys that are talking to recruiters that do technology stuff. How do you explain what you do? To a 17-year-old girl who's standing in front of you wanting to know what you do, how do you explain that to the recruiter? Oh, you Because the chick graduated from George Mason with a fucking political science degree, and that's all she knows. So how do you explain technology to that person of what you do? Yeah, th- th- it's just too broad of a, of a question. I don't know where to start with that one. How did you start with your recruiter? Did she just look at the position details and say, hey, do you need these position details? Or did she actually talk to you about the skills that you have? I'd sent her, you know, we, we'd gone over my resume a couple of times and applied for other positions and... Uh... You know, hey, look, you know, if you look at this, this position here, these are the key things that I can do. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of back and forth. Now, does she okay. actually understand networking and computer science? Kind of. That's what I was looking for. So you had to do your own work. You had to kind of explain things, finesse things, to get them to work with that person as opposed to talking to a person who is a developer or is a person who does networking yeah, with a computer science degree. So I think that's hard for, it doesn't matter what type of job that you do, whether you're a cook and you're trying to explain, I do this type of cooking to a person who only does engineering. They know that that's food and that's all they know that it is. Yeah, They see that you can eat it, but they don't know how you make it. Yeah, One of my problems is that I've got such a broad scope. All right, yeah. I joke around about, you know, I tease people about the fact, well, I can. I can build a computer blindfolded. I can also go on the internet. I can order the parts and build my own cable TV company. I know how to build a cell phone tower from pouring the foundation up. You know, so, you know, running wires through walls, digging trenches to connect the backbone of the infrastructure of, you know, be it, you know, copper or fiber. I can visualize each step of that process. I get hung up on the permits. <laughs> but the graft so, so, and uh, <laughs> shadiness yeah, about the business yeah. part of it. <laughs> so there, there's there's the IT professionals, yeah. and that's what I consider myself, which is telecommunications. I can help make all these things talk. Trying to describe what I do from just nothing, it, it really it, it takes me a while to figure out where do I start from on this. Yeah. I just ran into this the other day because I was talking to a recruiter and this guy only recruits for commercial contracts. He does nothing to do with the government at all. And I had to explain to him what I do for work, which is just basically talking to people. Getting information, either coercively or not coercively, from a person who may or may not want to give you that information. But explaining intelligence work to that person was very difficult, because he didn't understand it. And I didn't know that he didn't know either. So I came to this stopping point where he didn't know what I was talking about, and I was saying acronyms that he had no clue what I was talking about. And sometimes what you have to say, sometimes what you want to say is proprietary information where you know, maybe it's not classified. I, I can say it, but I just really shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the big issue with recruiters that a lot of them are 17, literally 23 year old women, which isn't a bad thing. It's just there are 23 year old women who have a communications or political science degree that are not working in their, their actual craft. But they're recruiting because that's how the recruiting industry works. And they see position details in front of them, but they don't understand how you set up a router, how you put an ISO image on a hard drive, and how you connect that to an enterprise system that hooks up to a bunch of servers and runs whatever scripting and coding to get stuff or to push out GPM rest to destroy things around you. They don't understand that. Yeah, that's kind of like, you know, how do you explain to somebody that, well, I'm able to hop into PuTTY, SSH into a router inside of a cell phone tower in Puerto Rico when I'm in Texas. 
because Windows has Active Directory built into it. That's and that's legit. what's keeping my uh, VPN going. That's legit. Okay. Now, so this is something for all you listeners out there who really want to learn how to get a good job. It may not be that you actually need to describe your skills the way you need to describe them. You might need to look at the position details within that actual position and then add it to your resume and then say, hey, I have these skills. Not explaining that you know how to network, however, or doing specific systems, that you just need to be able to describe what the actual position requires of you. I'm really confused by the recruiting processes these days, but recruiting has turned into what's on a piece of paper equals whatever the position is. That and there's the old phrase, oh, well, this person can talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. It's the opposite now. <laughs> that scenario I gave you about, you know, using PuTTY, SSH, you know, using an SSH to get to the, the tower yeah. because I have my VPN set up through Windows Active Directory. I can spew all that out because I know it. But if somebody said, Corey, set this up, mm. I can't do it. I'd have to go look at the directions. And this this networking gig that I got here, there's an option to extend the contract beyond the uh, the 90 days. If that does happen, well, then I'm going to be, instead of just reconfiguring the network, I'm going to be setting up different email systems through Active Directory. They weren't so much interested in the fact that I knew how to do it, but just that, you know what, I've done some labs. I told them the truth. I've done some labs, and I've done it in a classroom environment. When we talked about it, I was able to, yeah, well, I know about this, and I straight up told them, no, I don't know how to do that, but I have done it before. Yeah. I know I can do it. I'd have to look at the directions. There were multiple questions they asked me where that was my answer. Yeah. Time and time again. I don't know how to do that, but this is... And don't be afraid to say what you do know. Yeah. Well, I don't know about this, but I... I when we're talking about Active Directory, I do know that, oh, we use a semicolon to switch through names. And I remember talking about groups and, you know, I can set up different file permissions and grant access this way and that way. Yeah. That kind of dropping in a few notes of, well, I do know this can win you the job. Because, hey, he just, he knows something. We'll train him the rest of the way. He's got something to work off of. Yeah. He can look at the rest and has something to compare it to. I hope you listeners out there have gotten uh, some good advice out of this. This is real, real shit. Because you need to know how to get a job. Even if you already have one, it's the best time to find one. <laughs> Better to find a good job when you already have one than to not have a job and take a shitty one. Oh, God, I resemble that. Yep. Thanks for talking to Taco Bell. Hope you guys enjoyed this Destiny Chronicles episode number 17, Technology Adventures. I'm Wolf. I'm Corey. And uh, we love the viewers and all the subscribers. All of the subscribers. Every one of you who have actually subscribed. And to those who haven't subscribed, we love you even more. <laughs>